So in today's online tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can use Google's new AI tool called Whisk. It's a powerful tool if you want to create new styles and have more control over your image editing with your own image inputs. So let's get started. So with Whisk, the essential idea here is to merge different things together to get one final output. The idea isn't to just make one image or two, it's to combine several images together to merge them in terms of their styles and get one cohesive output. So if you don't have any images to start with, what I would recommend is just hitting this dice button because it basically gives you an idea just out of the box with Google's model and then we can click generate. So once we click generate, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what we can do with that image and why this tool is so powerful when it comes to creating final image outputs. So you can see the image has been generated here already. And what you wanna do once that image is generated, you can then open up this sidebar because this is basically gonna be where the majority of our manipulation goes in terms of manipulating the final image output. So essentially we've gotten two images here and some of these look really good. So what I'm actually gonna do now is I'm actually gonna use this woman for the subject image. So essentially right here, what it is now doing is analyzing the subject. Now, of course, this is a person. So this is going to be the main focus of that image. So now what we want to do is we basically want to generate a scene. So a scene is basically going to be some kind of environment, a location, a place that this woman is going to be at. So what I will do is I will have to either upload an image, which I'll show you guys after, or I can enter a simple image prompt. But for this one, what I will do is I'll just generate it randomly so you guys can understand. So over here, you can see it's generated this image already, and that so far looks very good. So that seems to be some kind of fantasy environment. Tennis court, honestly, I can't really see. But if you do click the button on the bottom left and we open this up, we can see that it looks like, yeah, a fantastical tennis court located within a lush, overgrown, magical city. So, of course, what we can do here, since we are going to have the character inside the scene, we can add some additional details, okay? I will add that after so you can see how the prompt is controlled. But now all we need to do is just have a final style on how that image is going to look. So we can see here that we've got the subject, we've got the scene, we've got the style. And the style is, of course, what's going to drive how these final inputs merge together. So it won't change the scene. It won't change the subject. It will just change visually how this is perceived. So once again, I'm going to hit the dice icon. And here you can see it's basically given us this anime scene. So it says a vintage anime style guide, which is really nice, of course. This looks really cool because I don't really know that many styles. I know a few styles, but I'm not artistic enough to know every single style. So rolling the dice sometimes can give you a little bit of inspiration. So what I will do now is I will essentially just merge these. And so now what I will do is I will just literally click this button. And now what will happen is because I've got three inputs here, it's now going to generate this subject, which is the woman in this place in this style. So we can see right here that we have that image right here. So we can see it's this woman. We've got the background, which is the location of the fantastical tennis court. And then, of course, we have this in the anime style. So that's basically the gist of how this works. But there's so many other small, you know, features and things that I think are really cool that you definitely want to check out. So one of them that's really cool is that quickly you can change the aspect ratio. So if you want to post this to, you know, a different social media platform, I'm not sure, maybe you want to use it in an online story. What we can do is have the portrait style right here. So we can see that that is going to be formatted for there. So you can see that when we have this aspect ratio, it's actually going to be much more effective on different social media platforms. Likewise, once again, we can click this icon and go to the square where we can actually have the other platforms too. And so this is super, super nice because what we can gauge here is of course the different platforms are different styles. So for the majority of this video, I will keep it on landscape. But once again, if you want to see how different styles impact it, what we can do is we can just hit, keep hitting the dice and then we can kind of build up a style board here. So once again, we can see that now it is picked on a sticker. So you're only allowed to have one active style at a time. So if I do do this in this sticker style and we generate this image it's actually going to give us a sticker style image but i'm guessing that the reason it couldn't generate this one is because maybe the sticker background is a little bit too complex so i'm pretty sure if i go for this style it should be able to give us exactly what we ask so yeah that looks really nice and as always i would recommend just clicking this button here so you can see what kind of style this is if you've never seen it before so this is like a paper cut style this looks really effective so i'll definitely be going ahead and probably saving this we can hit the style dice a bit more times and of course 
course, if you don't want certain styles, we can just delete them if they don't fit whatever it is that we are trying to create. Now, luckily, this does support image uploads. And I'll show you guys one last style here. So I'm going to go ahead and generate this one. This style is a 1960s grainy film aesthetic. And we can see right here that it actually generates something really, really cool. So I really, really do like the fact that you can mess around with styles and get multiple different things. Now, what's also cool is that you can actually move these images around. So let's say, for example, I wanted to move this dinosaur up here and I wanted to delete this woman. Now I'm actually going to get a dinosaur in this location. OK, so what I will be able to do is I'll be able to essentially get a dinosaur in this location at this style so if i hit this in right now you can see that i'm able to get some new images and we can clearly see here that we have this same dinosaur in these new areas i will say one thing though one thing that is mildly frustrating when it comes to google's whisk is that it currently doesn't support really consistent characters i do suspect that this will change in the future but there are minor nuances that i've seen that really don't look that good and i'm going to show you guys what I mean by that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of these images and then I'm going to upload some of my own images to show you guys exactly what I mean. So I'm going to upload an image of a car. So I've got this image of a red car. I'm now going to upload an image of a background. And so I've also got this jungle racetrack that is now uploading. You'll be able to see this one in a minute and you can see it's analyzing the image. So you can see right here, it basically just gives you a prompt. And for the most part, it looks like what Google Whisk is actually doing is just transferring over the prompts into one final image. It doesn't look like it's actually capturing what the image is and then actually transferring it in the AI. So of course, for the style, what I will do is I will do the paper cut style. And then now when I click generate, you're going to see this car on this racetrack in this style. And so, yeah, so for this particular example, what we can see here is that, you know, it doesn't capture the exact car. So whatever object it is that you might have, I would specify exactly what it is. So if you want to go into here, we can edit the details. So I'm not sure if Google will get this, but instead of saying a red sports car, since I know the make and model of this car, I'm going to put a red 911 GT2 RS with a black code, yada, yada, yada. And that's basically the main thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to just save that. So now when I open this up and so you can see here that it actually just updates the thing. So you can see right here that now that I've put a red 911 GT RS, you can see that this is the initial image. So I would actually have to switch over to this other image right here. But if I do switch over to this image right here, what I will be able to do is get a much cleaner response. So now when I generate this prompt, you'll see what I mean. So yeah, you can see that the subject is now actually here. So if you're struggling with character consistency, if you know the specific make and model of whatever object it is or whatever the subject is, then I would say try really hard to get that into your prompt. And then of course, what you'll be able to do is generate images from Imogen. So you can see right here, my initial image is all the way down here. And if I want to edit that, you can see a red 911 GT2 RS. It basically just copies this image because of course, the make and model of the car is so specific that when it uses this prompt, because remember, guys, it's not copying the direct image. What it will do is it will then bring that all into one entire prompt. So the entire prompt is basically just three of these. It's really cool. But I do think that in the future, they will change it so that you can actually have the images being merged together because you can see right here that it actually says a layered paper red 911 GT2 RS. And that's why the image has come here. So basically it's just describing these images. So the more you can describe these images, if they have specific products or names, it's going to do much better in terms of your product consistency. Now, what we can also do as well is we can animate these videos. So it's completely up to you. We can just click animate here. Now, I will say that this animation currently is supported by VO2. So it isn't supported that well in terms of the video quality. And currently it costs you 10 of your AI credits, which is why I know that this is the VO2, the fast one. So for this one, I'm not actually going to put too much in terms of the motion control because VO2, whilst yes, it can do minimal motion, it's not great at objects moving or driving. It can work, but it doesn't look the best. So for this one, I've just put the car is parked and the camera moves cinematically around the car, even though that's not really a word. And so we can actually see what that car looks like here. So take a look at the cinematic. And I don't know about you guys, but I really like this. We can see that there is great consistency of how the motion is. And I think this is overall a really good showcase of what the model can do. And it does seem that I was actually wrong about my generations. It seems that it's only 
10 generations every now and again, which is a little bit weird considering I do have AI credits. And so I'm actually surprised here, but this actually managed to nail my entire prompt. I basically said, car drives down the road and then drives out of scene. So this one was actually surprising to me because VO2, it usually isn't that good when it does come to video generations. But the point here with this, the idea for this tool is not really to generate these incredible, you know, you know, incredible videos. It's mainly just to animate, you know, a few things here and there because I've seen the demos that Google have shown and a lot of the video clips are basically just things like text, things like, you know, mascots and other small images. And it's not crazy, but it does show what you're able to do when you're able to get, you know, a few environments, a few styles and you're able to prompt things differently and so it really is up to you what you want to do with this of course with the files what you can do is you can download all videos if you want to you know make a project with them of course what they do have for example if we go to a new project as well we can actually load a preset so we can load the plushie preset or we can load um, a capsule toy so if we want these certain things from google it's up to you if you just want to load these in. I'm not sure why they have these, you know, one or two things here. It is kind of interesting. But at the same time, I do think the whisk, provided that you're able to prompt rather effectively, you're able to see how certain things impact these styles. And I would say for your styles, do make sure that whatever style you do use, it does have a specific background. So if you're trying to generate, you know, a character or whatever, do make sure that there's a background and an art style because you won't be able to generate, for example, this woman in this background in this art style because it's just a plain white figurine. Now, another really cool feature that I like about this entire whisk thing is that let's say, for example, you're working on something and you've discovered something really cool. So for example, what I can do is I can head back. I can click my library. Then what I can do is remember how I generated that really cool car. So let me go over to this one. This is the one where I think I generated it in. Okay, it wasn't that bun, but we can go to another project. So I'm gonna open this one and I'm gonna show you something really cool. So what we can do here is let's say, for example, remember how I generated that car and I was like, okay, I really like this. I figured out the prompt and everything. I can actually share this whisk with other users. So what you're able to do is essentially share that entire recipe so other people can have their own creations. Now, this is particularly useful and powerful if you want to maybe create something on social media, like a trend where everyone changes their avatar to something or where everyone changes their banner to something so for example i can of course create this link and i'll show you guys what happens when you open it up so google actually did tweet this and they basically said create your own google android io bot using this whisk recipe so if you click this link this is what will happen so you'll then be prompted to this area right here and you can see you can click make your own so when you click make your own, now you can see which things were changed. So for example, here we can see that it's the woman and it's in this style. So we open up this side area and all we'd need to do if we wanted to was just input a profile picture of ourselves and then it would give us this bot style. And so I can take a screenshot from a recent video and then I'm gonna just give it a second and then it's gonna analyze that image. And then I'm just gonna say, turn my subject into a fun Google Android IO collectible. So if I click this now, it's basically going to keep this style and it's going to just use this subject and basically put it into the box in that style so from this as well what we can see is that if you do want to maintain that really specific image where for example the background isn't there and you actually get this inside what we can do is i can just take this prompt and i can just say white background png so now it's of course going to give me an entirely different image but i will show you that this retains the initial goal of the first prompt so now i just have to wait for image and four to do its thing so now you can see right here i just have this image and then i'm just going to of course keep this one and then now when i click play you can see that it's actually going to put this style into the box as we originally wanted it so your best bet when using a subject don't have a background there and so your best bet here is to actually make sure that whatever image you have you do have a white background i do think it is actually my fault for not clicking this button right here just always make sure that you double click these buttons here ensure that you've got the yellow check mark and that way it will actually use everything because these images right here i can actually bin these because these aren't the correct images that i would have wanted so a lot of times it's going to be easier when using a subject to just have that subject having a white background because it's easier for google to focus on and identify that specific subject as for the style of course you can see the style it immediately creates this little you know figurine which of course you can share with google and say thanks for sharing this with me so that i could try it out so overall i think this is a fun way to you know do many different things i think it looks really cool of course you could have a different scene for example i could just once again you know i don't really have any ideas but if i just generate this we're going to see exactly what it comes up with it looks like some kind of carnival slash fun fair on the ocean but yeah you can definitely experiment with this and i would say that 
definitely try and see what you can do if you're struggling with image generation prompts. It's just something that I think it's a lot easier to create images provided that you have something like this. So if this tutorial helped you out, of course, leave any comment section down below. I'll try my best to respond to them and I'll see you guys in the next one.